Yeah, welcome here at Seismic Radio and uh, welcome to another session of Deception in the Church. Uh, we are looking at the letter to the Philippians today. Uh, so you can see this here. If you are uh, following us on YouTube, you can see the, um, um, the Bible as it uh, is presented by Bible Gateway. Dot com. So just uh, bear this in mind, BibleGateway.com. So if you ever wish to um, do some online Bible study, these guys are really good. Okay, let's uh, have a look at uh, what this talk is all about. And I mentioned this on all the other talks. I'm going to mention it again, and it's about deception in the church. What is deception in the church all about? Um, we are looking at an aspect where, which is rarely preached in, in um, standard churches. If you go to the uh, average Bible-believing church, um, some of them, they make a big fuss about it and they, you know, rip everyone and everything else apart. Um, others, they don't really talk that much about it. And it's, it's a subject which is a little bit sort of brushed underneath the carpet. No, we are looking in, in here, in, uh, uh, in this session, we are looking at uh, the books in the New Testament. And uh, just for this study, we're only going to look at uh, the aspects uh, where it actually talks about deception in the church. And you'll be surprised that it, it's, it's, it's almost, it's not every book. I think there's one or two where there isn't a mention of, uh, you know, deception in the church. But there is almost every book in the New Testament talks about false brothers, about false doctrines, about people trying to lead other people as, astray. It talks about deception. And it's very uh, important to sort of highlight this. Now, if, if the New Testament talks about it in every book, uh, then there's some relevance for our lives as well. And, and we need to take this to heart. We need to open our eyes. You know, not everybody who comes along and says, Jesus, Jesus, you know, is, is real, is genuine. Yeah. And I'm not just talking about, um, you know, I'm obviously I'm not sure who you are and where you're listening from. I mean, I'm talking from a, a standpoint of, of biblical Christianity, so-called evangelical Christianity, and it's very easy to, to sort of point on the outside, you know, Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses and things like that. And they've, they've got quite a seriously different doctrine to uh, what the Bible preaches and what we are preaching. And, um, but it's not just them where the danger is. It, it's right inside the church. And, 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 and a lot of scriptures are suggest, suggesting this. So we should keep our eyes open. We should, um, you know... Look out, make sure that uh, we are keeping close to the Word of God. Now, quickly, where does heresy start and where does it stop? So I'm, I don't want to put you on a, on a heresy hunt, you know, that you're looking for the heretic and, you know, shun him with all your might. I'm not talking about that. Yeah? Um, we all make mistakes. We all can doctrinally, you know, get it wrong. Um, it happens to all of us. But... Um, we should be open to correction as well. Uh, and, and, and that appeals, you know, you, dear listener, as well. You can get it wrong. I'm getting it wrong. I know that in the past I've gotten it wrong many times. And I'm sure if, if, uh, if you took the magnifying glass, glass and you went through my theology and what I understand, um, that, that there will be many things which aren't right. You know? So the aim and the purpose of this talk is not to send you out there you know, to, to, to take the magnifying glass for every preacher you come across and to expose the heretics. <clears throat> but the aim is, is just to be open in your heart. You know, listen to the Spirit of God. Um, read, keep your nose in the Bible and keep close to the Bible. And if you hear stuff which doesn't kind of tie up with the Bible or with the understanding of the Bible, pray about it, seek God about it. And, and maybe, just maybe, it is time to reject what a particular preacher is saying. And maybe it is time to leave a movement yeah i mean there as i mentioned before there are a couple of movements which are quite quite in error as far as the bible is concerned one of them being the jehovah's witnesses the other one the mormons and they are extreme examples uh, i think today they try and portray themselves as christian groups now again if you get your book in the bible and you it shouldn't take you a very long time you will you will sense that something isn't quite right something doesn't add up quite right you know with what you read in the bible and what these guys are preaching and it's time to leave them and maybe there are some other churches as well okay uh just to before i carry on don't go crazy yeah don't go around and um you know find the heretic and make a big fuss about it uh, but open your heart you know open your heart to god open your heart to what god really wants to tell you uh stick your nose in the bible read the book 
try and understand it. Try to talk to you know your Christian friends about what the book has got to say to get clarity on certain aspects in your life and what the Bible is saying. And then move on with your life. What is the danger of heresy? Heresy tends to get you to, to damage your relationship with God. That's always the ultimate aim. And it tries to lead you away, sort of on a side path. You know, you still think you're going in the right direction, but slowly it's wearing off to the side and, uh, and you end up in the wrong way. I'll give you one example. Recently, I, um, I was, uh, there was a huge traffic jam on the motorway and I had to cross. So here in England, we've got a mountain range. Uh, it's called the Pennines. And, um, <clears throat> and um, I had to get across this, or oh, it's a hill range, really, depends where you look at it. I had to get across this pass, this range, and the main route was clocked up with, with a huge amount of traffic. And I knew that there was a, a side route yeah, and that there was a town um, which was on the other side of the traffic jam. And if I could hit... Uh, this road, I might be able to avoid it. And I was aiming to to drive into the direction. It wasn't very hard to do. You know, the sun was in the sky, so I could, you know, orientate myself around. I knew where the sun was. I knew the direction I had to go. There were the hills as well, which you could see in the distance. So you had another focal point of orientation. But even though I tried my best to go into the direction where I needed to go, I ended up on... Uh, <laughs> completely the opposite way around and I, in the end I gave up and it just uh, joined to the queue in the traffic jam and waited my time uh, quite horrendous quite quite depressing but I failed um, and that's what heresy is like as well you're trying to aim to do the right thing to walk with God but if you follow a, a false doctrine it's going to try and take you slightly away from the truth ever so slightly but as time goes on uh, one day you look back and you find you you haven't progressed in any way whatsoever. And on the contrary, you are further behind than where you started when you went on the wrong way. And therefore, it is important to, you know, get these things right and to spend some time, you know, in the Bible and seeking God about, you know, the stuff you believe. Okay, Philippians is a very positive letter. It's not like the Corinthians where, where Paul has to go in and sort pretty much everything out or the Romans where he has to establish you know, all the basics, or maybe the Ephesians as well, where he, um, and Galatians, you know, where he, he looks at certain errors and he, he tries to put it on. But it's actually a very positive letter. It's very commendable. You know, the uh, Philippians, they were very kind. Um, they were very kind to him. Uh, they helped him out. They made sure that his needs were met. And, and he's got positive things to say. But still, he talks about, Paul talks about false teachers. And we're going we're gonna to go into the first chapter and uh, and we've got the first verse here and this is a really bizarre ver verse um, and I'm just looking for it um, and we've got it here in, in verse 15 yeah. some indeed preach Christ even from envy and strife and some also from goodwill the former preach Christ from selfish ambition not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my chains but the latter out of love knowing that I'm appointed for the defense of the gospel what then only that in every way whether in pretense or in truth Christ is preached and in this I rejoice yes and I will rejoice okay weird you know, when you look at this, people are preaching Christ, yeah? and bear in mind, this is not a time when, you know, being a Christian was a cool, cool thing, or it was good. It's a time when uh, being a Christian meant you were, you could be in danger, you could suffer persecution. Uh, anyway, Paul says that um, uh, a lot of people, they preach Christ out of envy and strife. And why are they envious? And probably, you know, you get people like Paul going around, a lot of people respect him. A lot of people listen very carefully to what uh, what Paul is to say, and he's got some authority. And and very often people are on a power trip. You know, they want other people to listen to them. They want other people to uh, admonish them and to uh, you know give them respect and 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 so on. And and a shortcut is sometimes seen uh, as uh, you know the preacher man, the preacher man route, the Christianity route. So you come, uh, you go into the church, and uh, you start preaching the gospel and uh, you get people behind you, they love you, they support you, and they do all sorts of stuff. And 
And, and Paul makes it out here and he says, they are doing this out of selfish, selfish ambition, selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to uh, Paul's chains. That's what Paul is saying in, in verse 16. Um, but then the others, you know, some out of sincerity, they preach Christ out of sincerity and out of love. Um, and, um, and they know that, you know, what Paul's role is and that, uh, you know, he has been appointed to do this, this job and they are supporting him in this. Uh, but Paul says, you know, at the end, you know, who cares? In the end, Christ is preached, and in this he rejoices. Okay, the first thing is it's really worrying that there are people who preach the gospel and who are in the ministry who are doing this out of, for the wrong reasons. They're not really interested in God. They're just interested in themselves, and they do this out of selfish ambition. Um, scary, absolutely scary. Uh, we've got another one, and I think it's in chapter 2. Um, uh, it says that Paul, you know, talks about himself, you know, the um, problems he is facing and, um, and the struggles he is going through. Um, And we're going to go to the next one, chapter 3. There's one more scripture in here, actually two more, uh, which talk about uh, about this. And it's in chapter 3, right at the beginning. And uh, Paul says in verse 2, Beware of dogs, um, beware of evildoers, evil workers, beware of the mutilation. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the Spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have not confidence in the flesh, though I also might have confidence in the flesh. If anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I'm, I'm more so. And then Paul talks about, you know, all the stuff he has done. Okay, um, th there are, there's one more scripture after this which, which talks about this. Now we've got sheep and dogs, yeah, or pigs and dogs. And this is uh, an, an image in the New Testament which is used to describe people who pretend to be Christians but are not, you know. Or uh, the Jews used to describe the Greeks, the Gentiles, as dogs. And um, uh, unbelievers. So it's, it's some sort of weird terminology. Yeah? So it doesn't mean, I mean, think very often it's not fair on dogs, you know, to describe these people like that. But the point which is made here is there are people who haven't got, um, you know, the nature of sheep, yeah? which normally is uh, an image for Christians, but it's a different type of nature. You know? it's, a, it's a more aggressive nature. It's, it's a different type of nature. They don't belong there, but, but they move into the church, they get a platform, and they love being on this platform, and they abuse it. Yeah. Now, uh, in this instance, uh, we've got the, the problem about people who try to persuade Christians to stick to the, to the old Jewish customs, and to preach circumcision. So they say, look, if you want to be a Christian, if you want to follow Christ, you first need to become a Jew, and then you can become uh, a Christian. So you have to do the snippity snip, uh, get circumcised, and start keeping the law, stop eating pork, and, and other things, and then you can uh, go the Christian route. That's what these guys are saying, and, and obviously it's not the gospel, it's something else. And, and Paul you know, makes a very strong stance in the New Testament that this is not the case. Now, we've got this, I mean, in modern times, we don't have this issue about, um, um, you know, us being encouraged to go into Judaism. Um, but it's other things, you know, which is very similar, where people come up with a set of rules and they say, you want to be a Christian, you need to do X, Y, Z. And if you do X, Y, Z, you are okay. If you don't do it, there's something seriously, seriously wrong with you. Uh, and, and, and then very often they take the New Testament and they they cut a law out of the New Testament. Yeah. So they have like the X number of commandments from the New Testament and 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 they, they preach this. And as long as you stick to this, it's okay. If you don't stick to this, it's not okay. So it, stuff like, uh, you know, some is less extreme, some is more extreme. Stuff like, you know, a certain dress code, a certain uh, um, a headdress or hairdress. Yeah. So women long hair, men very short hair or something like that. Um, or, or some people, you know, makeup is okay and other churches is not okay. Television is okay, it's not okay. Internet okay, not okay. And, and you get like all these rules. And most important one is obviously is you have to give X amount of money to the church regularly in addition to your, you know, free will offerings, what they may call it. And, um, and then um, other bits as well, you know, regular church attendance and so on, which 
in itself, nothing is wrong with that. But the problem is when you turn it into a law, it kind of, you know, starts taking the joy out of your salvation and uh, makes it a pretty grim affair. Um, so again, what I'm saying is we, we have to be careful. We, ha we have the circumcision, you know, the what Paul talks here now. Beware of dogs, beware of, beware of evildoers, beware of the mutilation, for we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. Um, the circumcision people, they are still around. Yeah? It's just uh, the same concept, same idea, uh, but just a different coat they are wearing. Yeah. Um, slightly different, you know, different color. Not quite as uh, dramatic, but... But anyway, that's uh, that's what uh, what's happening here. Uh, we have got um, another scripture. There's one more scripture, which is a little bit maybe I'm not sure whether this actually fits into deception of the church, but I'm going to use it anyway. There's one scripture after this, but the current scripture uh, again, Paul does one more warning. He says, "Brethren, join." in following my example, and that's in verse 18, chapter 3, and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and I'll tell you, even weeping, that there are enemies of the cross of Christ. <sighs> whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, uh, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able to even, able even to subdue all things to himself. Okay, brethren, join in following my example. So Paul says, look, he is Paul, you know, he is the example. He tries to walk the way, you know, Christ wants him to walk. And then he says, and, and, and watch out for those who walk as you have for a pattern, yeah? And then he says, for many walk, and, and he goes the other side, you know, watch out for those, you know, do the same way as we do, but many walk, and I've taught you of these guys often, and I'll tell you even weeping, with weeping, that th th they're enemies of the cross of Christ, yeah? Whose end is destruction. Okay, and and... Again, you know, the, the, man, some people might read this and they think, oh, yeah, yeah, these are the people in the world. It's not. Because when you, when you, Paul is talking to the brethren and he's saying, you know, follow my example, you know, the way I've walked and, and know those who do the same thing and to have them that is Paul for a pattern. For he says many, and he's told them often about them and he's now telling them with weeping, they're enemies of the cross and their end is destruction. And then he says, whose God is their belly and whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. Yeah. So when you, when you look at these guys and what signifies them, it's all about, you know, earthly stuff, whatever is happening on here. And I mean, I, I think I mentioned this in the last talk as well, whereas one famous preacher, if you turn on Christian television and you keep it on for a couple of hours, you're bound to see this guy. And he made, a, he made an interesting statement. He, he talked about, you know, God being the God of abundance, you know, being rich, having everything, the, the, the money transfer from the wicked to the righteous. And, and, um, and, and he sort of was ridiculing other preachers who say that our heritage is not here, but it's in the world to come. And then he made the big point, I want it now. And you think, what? Did I hear this right? You want this now? You want riches now? Is this what it's all about, becoming a Christian? And, and look at the scripture, yeah? Um, whose God is their belly and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. So when I look at this preacher and apply the scripture, I can say, yeah, he's, he's all about the here and now, you know, what he can get here, what he can do here. And, and he sets his mind on earthly things because he wants his riches now. He wants his fancy house, a fancy car, the fancy everything, yeah? And, and it goes even further, you know, and, and Paul calls them enemies of the cross whose end is destruction. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether this particular guy actually, if, 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 I, if I were uh, guessing, <laughs> I would be surprised. I, obviously, I don't know. Yeah, Only God knows about these people. 
Uh, I know there are a lot of preachers out there who are well deceived and who have been following in the footsteps of these prosperity guys. And um, there are big problems uh, in, in the kingdom of God. And the problem is 11 is sort of carried throughout the church. But I also know, and I'm convinced, that when the day of judgment comes that, and we'll all be there, I'm not sure you know, how it's going to run but, uh, and how it's going to pan out, but that, that we will see people who we thought they, they would be a dead certain into, into, into heaven and they'll be judged and they'll be thrown into the lake of fire uh, or you know, suffer in some other way. Yeah have their reward removed or whatever. I, I don't know, yeah. But um, it, it sometimes worries me when I hear these guys and when I hear, I read the Bible and I'm kind of thinking, surely they must spend at least a little bit of time to read it, even if they just prepare for the odd sermon or, or so, or whether they, they are just, you know, talking out of their belly, literally, uh, without really understanding what they're talking about when they preach. I don't know. But anyway, there's a severe warning here and we need to take this warning to heart. Okay, there's one more scripture, and I thought, um, okay, deception in the church, they're here. We've got the mutilation, we've got the circumcision people. We've got people, and this is what in Philippians is, is a positive letter, and Paul talks to them about this stuff. We have got people who preach gospel out of, you know, the wrong reasons. They, they, they preach the gospel out of greed, out of envy, out of jealousy, out of strife, yeah. Um it's crazy, absolutely crazy. But this is what Paul is talking about in this in this uh, letter to the Philippians, very positive letter to the Philippians. And then we've got one more scripture in four. And, um, and I'm just going to highlight this. Uh, I'm going to read it off for our radio listeners. Um, I implore Yodia and I implore Suntichi to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I, I, I love it, yeah, because we sometimes get this sort of glorified view of uh, Christianity in the first century where we think it was all wonderful, you know, all these people who knew Jesus in person and you've met him in the flesh, uh, they had so much good stuff going on in their lives and, and we don't, you know, for us it's just faith, yeah. Um, for many of us it's really nothing. Some of us, we've had some experiences of some way or another, we maybe had a healing or... You've seen somebody getting healed or something. But for most of us, it's, it's just a faith, you know, pure faith. And then we've got um, uh, a good reminder that the church in the first century uh, wasn't quite as good as what we uh, might think it was. Anyway, we've got, he implores two women, I think they are female names, uh, Yodia and Suntiki. Uh, I'm not sure how it's pronounced, Suntiki or whatever. Anyway. Uh, he says to be of the same Lord, the same mind in the Lord, yeah? to be of the same mind in the Lord. And it sounds like these women uh, were fighting one another very bitterly and they, <laughs> they had a, a vendetta against one another. So Paul implores them and he says, look, reconcile. It's not worth it. You know, try and find some consensus. Try and find friendship somehow. Yeah. And... Uh, Um, amazing, amazing stuff. But then on the other side, he says, and I heard you also, true, um, true companion, help these women who labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and the rest of my fellow. And I'm not sure whether these women is Yodia and Sintiki, but, or he talks about others. But it, it sounds like they were really good, you know, pious, good women. Um, but I read this text, and yet something went wrong, and they, <laughs> they couldn't stand one another. And I tell you, this is a church as well, you know, and talking about deception in the church, uh, we are just a bunch of people who are thrown together, who sometimes in normal life would never meet, you know, together. We would never make friends with these people. You know, we just leave, let them do their thing and we do our thing and we just get on and we try not to upset one another. Um, I think that that sets what, um, what real life is. Then we go to the church and suddenly we get like people from all walks of life thrown together into one community celebrating the Lord and Savior. And having, you know, being supposed to be one in Christ, and yet it's very, very hard with some of the people when you uh, meet them and they've got edgy characters and they're sort of rough diamonds. Um, you sometimes can't see the real diamond underneath them. What you see is just a dirty roughness on the outside. Um, and I'm not just talking about, you know, people out there. I'm talking about myself as well. I'm, I, I'm sure I'm probably not the most pleasant person either. Uh, to live with or deal with, but um, 
Um, but it happens in the church as well. It happened in the first century church. It happened when the church, you know, was still uh, uh, amazingly fresh. You know, miracles were happening. Interesting stuff was happening. Um, it happened in those days. Okay, that's just a little bit on the edge of deception in the church. So if you get people who are a little bit rough around the edges, doesn't mean all is wrong. I mean, Paul, if I read this text right, he's recommending these women. And they've been, you know, strong women in the gospel, but, you know, <laughs> they fell out somehow, which is a tragedy. And uh, one day in heaven, we will all see what happened to uh, Euodia and Syntyche. It, it's a pity as well that they were mentioned in this context. But as they were reprimanded, they were also commended at the same time. So we know they've done some great stuff, but they also had some struggles as well. Okay, let me sum up with Philippians. Philippians, when you read the letter, it's a very positive letter. Paul is very positive about the Philippians. They were good guys. They were helping Paul. They were trying their best to, uh, to move on the gospel and the message of the gospel. But even there, Paul has got some warnings. He, first of all, warns of people who preach a false gospel. And um, then that's in chapter 1, yeah. and they do this out of strife and envy. Then we go to chapter 3, and um, <clears throat> uh, we have got the dogs, yeah. the dogs, evil workers, what a title, huh? Uh, they are called the mutilation, the circumcision people. And they're in the church as well, and they are, you know, trying to replace the gospel with uh, something else. And that's really an issue we've got today, that the true, undiluted, pure message of the gospel gets replaced with, with uh, something else. We've got the, uh, the social gospel. We've got the gospel of, um, you know, convenience. You know, it's better to live with Christ than in this world. Um, it's, it's really, really strange. So we've got... Uh, sometimes something, you know, people coming in trying to replace the gospel, trying to re replace the truth with something else. And Paul called some dogs and evil workers. Very hard title, very harsh title. And he even wants the Philippians. Yeah. And he says, beware, beware of these people. And, and if the Philippians, you know, the good church, um, if they get, <laughs> get this, uh, <coughs> this warning, I'm sure it should apply to us as well. <clears throat> okay, and then we've got um, the people who, you know, Paul says, you know, take note of the good ones, yeah, who walk according to the pattern, you know, the way it should be done. And then he also talks about the people who are the enemies of the cross, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, and they set their mind on earthly things. So beware of these guys as well, yeah. It, it's very easy, you know, bad company, uh, you know, spoils good character or corrupts good character. Um, and I think we've got the same thing here as well. And, and he, uh, Paul makes a little bit of a point of those, you know, watch out for these guys. I mean, if you hang out with people who are all day there talking about it's worldly stuff and, um, you know, sensual stuff, it's all about, you know, feeding their senses. And you might take it to any way. It might be drink, it might be food, it might be sex, it might be fun. Uh, I'm not saying that as a Christian you're not allowed to have any fun, sex, or food, uh, but you have it with a different mindset. You know? And uh, if your mindset is just set on these things, you know, and nothing else, if you don't surpass this mentality, um, you are not much better than a than an animal. You know, a dog he thinks about probably the same things. He thinks about you know having a bit of fun, food, and all the other bits as well. You know? Um, so really, I want to encourage you to um, to to first of all look out for these guys, and then second, I mean, obviously, what do you, what do, you do? You know, you've got somebody in your church, and he's all about um, you know earthly things. It's it's a difficult thing. I mean, do you avoid him? Do you not? First of all, you need to recognize, you know, who these guys are and what makes these guys tick. And then um, once you realize the problem, I mean, half the, the battle is over anyway. Uh, I, it depends where this guy stands. I mean, there, there are two options. One of them is they are brothers in Christ or sisters in Christ who have lost the way a bit, which can happen, and it's not a problem. We all do this at times. And we need to encourage them to, um, to get back over to our side, you know. And then Paul makes a point here, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly, eagerly wait for the Savior, you know. Uh, we don't belong here. That's, that's basically what Paul is saying, you know. We don't own anything here. 
uh, we are no longer part of this world. You know, that's that's the understanding here. We are we've got a different citizenship. Um, I mean, I live in a foreign country with a, a foreign citizenship. And uh, foreign country, foreign citizen. Uh, anyway, in a country with a foreign citizenship, and I know a little bit what it means. You know, I I live here. You know, I'm work here, operate here. I've got friends here, um, but really deep down, uh, I don't belong here. And and uh, on a fleshly, earthly level, yeah. And um, and and it gives like an awareness where you know the the sense of belonging isn't there. You know, you just know it's not my my home. Yeah. You know? Um, and in, in a way, it's good. It's a good reminder because we don't belong here on earth as Christians. We belong to heaven and we shouldn't, you know, ma make it too cozy here either. Uh, we should be focused on heaven. And it's important that if it's a brother who's going to stray a little bit, you know, and who suddenly puts his focus on, um, you know, other things which are here in the world. And, and sometimes it's like a, it's like this gradual thing. Like I was trying to hit for the Pennines, um, you know, going on little by, by roads, little country roads and country lanes. And I missed it. Yeah, I missed it. I, in the end, I uh, somehow I managed to do a 180 degree t uh, um, turn somehow, you know, through lots of little tiny roads. Uh, they're not, not straight hot roads here where you could go either east, west, but you go on a road which goes towards the east and then suddenly it forces you to, to turn back on yourself. And and that's a that's very easy. You know, it starts very slightly and then before you know, you are, you've completely lost it and you are doing stuff which, you know, you shouldn't really be doing. If it's a brother, you know, reprimand him, you know, encourage him or a sister, encourage him or her to go back on the straight and narrow, you know, go aside them, you know, take them by the arm and, uh, you know, brother, sister, let's go this way. Let's let, come with me. You know? uh, it shouldn't go the other way. You shouldn't, you know, be led astray into the same direction. If it's somebody who uh, clearly hasn't given his life to Jesus Christ, he can't really relate to what you're saying, then obviously we need to... Uh, Try and reach out to these guys with the gospel. Let them know, you know, uh, where the way is and where the right way is. But what we shouldn't do is we shouldn't join in with them. And I think that's sometimes what's happening within Christianity. It's the um, a fellowship on the lowest common denominator. That's what I would call it. People um, decide to water everything down so so much that that it's okay for somebody who's not a Christian to join in to the fellowship. And to be part of it and to have something like a social club, yeah, doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, it might work for a short time, but it's not really the purpose. That's not what we are here for. We are not here to um, to to hand out spiritual Prozac, but we are here to cure people from a deathly disease. Yeah. People have got cancer, um, you know, spiritual cancer. They are on their way to the grave. They are on their way to uh, an eternity in hell. Um, we are here to uh, to rescue these people and to give them not just a Prozac to forget about their misery, but to give them healing, true healing, healing of the soul, healing of the heart, and reconciliation with God to lead them towards an eternity with God. Uh, in happiness, tranquility, goodness, and everything good, as opposed to everything bad, pain, suffering, and so on. Okay, my friends, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop at this point. I think I've made every point about three times now. Um, so Philippians, deception in the church. Yes, it's in Philippians. We've got a warning. Um, we need to be on our guard. We need to, uh, I would call it positive action to use modern lingo. Yeah. We need to take positive action when we, when we see this happening. You know, try to get people around you know, lead them to the truth, lead them to an understanding of the truth, lead them to righteousness, but don't be led by them towards a lie, towards unrighteousness. And that's a danger, and I think that's a danger Paul is, 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 is talking, uh, talking about here. You know, the devil tries to place his people in our ranks to spoil us and to, you know, give us rottenness. We need to turn it on the devil, and we need to get those people he places in our ranks uh, to understand and realize who Jesus Christ really is and to lead them to an understanding of the truth and to holiness. Okay, I'll uh, leave it at that. That's Philippians. Uh, next, we're going to look at Colossians and we're going to see whether there's something about deception in the church in Colossians as well. As I said, there are, I think there's Philemon and a couple of other letters, one other letter, um, where there isn't any, any reference. But so far, 
you know, from Matthew all the way to Philippians, deception in the church is mentioned all over. And we need to take this serious. We need to beware. That's what the text in Philippians says. Beware of um, false doctrine, of deception, false brethren, false sisters, false people, you know, trying to lead us astray. And we need to, you know, turn it around on them. Instead of being led astray by them, we lead them to the truth and we lead them to redemption. Uh, the devil tries to destroy us by um, sometimes placing bad people into our ranks. We're going to turn the stick on him, and we're going to get those people into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of heaven, to an understanding of Jesus Christ. And uh, <laughs> should be should be great. Okay, God bless and bye-bye from Michael here at Seismic Radio.